I stand. But there was huge issues then. So is the recharge, uh, we've got mixed views here as to whether the recharge is a, a stronger than normal or, or weaker than normal, but is it is the recharge more than what we're drawing out? It, the water level is coming up last okay. night, and like I said, I missed the presentation, so you were there, Tim. But my understanding is that the, the water level has okay. been coming up in the monitoring walls. Okay. What about the millage that you were referring to for the water rights? How much money is that going to produce? Oh, two geez. mills. It's two mills, and uh, I don't know. Okay. The, 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 but, you, what, but you've estimated that you think that that will be adequate to buy the water rights yeah, that you're and, seeking? Yeah, and when you say we, here's what happened. The PVACD is an elected board. Okay. Most people don't realize that. You know, we, we know about the city council. Okay. Everybody knows about the county commissions. We know about school boards. We also have an elected uh, Pecos Valley Artesian Conservancy District board that is elected in general elections, and they have the ability to impose a mill levy, you know, a, a property tax mill, without going to the voters. City of Roswell, city council cannot <coughs> impose a mill levy increase. Without, without a vote of it. Exactly. What's that? Not over up for election in 2014. But are they even on the same cycle? That are they off cycle because it's is it a nonpartisan? Well, that's what I was wondering. I was wondering if it's nonpartisan. Non uh, you know, whether it could have been it could piggyback off of the municipal elections or even probably a long shot school board election. Well, and I don't know. You gonna yeah. you'd have, I would give them a holler, six two, two seven thousand I believe, PGA CD. So all the water rights are Pecos River. Pecos Valley Artesian Conservancy District. Okay, I mean, but there's you're not you're not haggling over water rights uh, anywhere else. No, we're not. Okay. We're good. Okay. So, yeah, good. See, this is a quick aside. Not that you want to put it. This is an example of, I think, the beauty of the interview format. I would never think to address water in, in a call, but you know, this is a question that has come up. Bam, let's address it. I got one for you. Still. Hit me. Hit me. I think Mary might have something though. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the zoo and stuff. It, okay. um, it's come to my attention that uh, somebody I know had gone to the zoo the other day, and she said that the animals there just looked horrible. They're bored. There's no doesn't seem to be any exercise for them to do. They're in small cages. Is there any? What do you think could be done to bring in more tourists and increase funding for the zoo that they could be given either? more room in the exhibits or possibly move to a place where there's more land so that the animals would have more room? Uh, we did have a, a gentleman who with us had a very strong background in zoological operations come in and do a walk through and staff interview a few um, about a month ago and uh, I have not sat in on his debrief. Uh, I know that there's certain key people have. The zoo is an interesting subject. Um, the zoo operations only produce about 8% return on investment. In other words, uh, for every dollar the city puts in the zoo, we only get about $0.08 cents back because it's free. There is no charge. So the question becomes, how do we fund the zoo and where do we put it on a priority list? If I'm not mistaken, the zoo runs about $800,000 a year for the city. Um, we we want the zoo to be a quality experience and how we do that is something we need to have further review of. I don't have an answer for you. I know it's something that we are looking at, um, but we don't have an answer right yet. Part of the things I will offer to you, and this might sound like an excuse, but it's a reality, we're still building the team at the city. We have the city manager has been there six months. Director of Administrative Services has been online for about six weeks now, and uh, we're still trying to sort some things out. This uh, budget cycle, which we just went through, which I'm very pleased with, we just got through the budget cycle, and uh, that has dominated city staff attention. We'll have a little more time to look at some of these other things. That's one of them. Maybe if we could uh, get a copy of the uh, if uh, the. The guy that came through, maybe we get a copy of his report. That would probably yeah, tell a lot of tales right there. Let me find out what the status is. Okay. Okay.
Oh, we find it. Well, uh, yeah, I'm good. Hmm. Um, I've got okay. one uh, okay. about the ETZ. <laughs> Do you know who the city's three appointees are to the ETZ? ETZ Authority? ETZ Commission. The Commission, all right. I can read you the names of who's on there now. Yeah. Matthew Bristol? Yeah. City? Right. Larry Connolly? Yes, City. Mark Kirk? Yes, I'm pretty sure that's City. I think that's City. Uh, Poncho Maples, we know is County. Correct. You were laying in Harold Hobson, also kind of Neil Rowe, maybe the one they let themselves. East City. Okay. Are you aware that the Chavez County Commissioners today did not reappoint the chairman, Royce Poncho Maples? I heard that they appointed Greg Nyberg. Yes. Yeah, I heard that. Did not reappoint Maples. Maples was one of the four votes in favor of the medicinal marijuana farm and, and the former Nature's Dairy, whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you know when the terms were up for the city when they were appointed for these city appointees? I, I don't know. I, I'll be honest with you, that's something where I need to sit down with our city clerk and look at. The whole, we have so many boards and commissions and we're sorting, we're continuing to sort through when are appointments, what are the terms. We've had some holes in our documentation about on these boards. Who was appointed when? I think uh, museum trustee board is a classic example. There's some confusion about what are the terms and when have the people been appointed. Um, we're trying to straighten all of that out. Uh, Larry Connolly tells us he was appointed in April, and apparently he was the only one appointed in April, so there must have been a vacancy. For there was uh, a somebody. lady, a previous lady, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, White, um, Karina White, had moved out of town. She, had, she and her husband moved to Florida, and so she had resigned from the ETZ. So my question uh, is essentially, uh, those ETZ members that voted for mm -hmm. the medical marijuana farm, do you think they should be reappointed or replaced on the ETZ commission? I will look at each individual um, separately. I have some concerns with that decision. Uh, on the can, commission? Yes. I do. Do you think they made wrong decisions? Yes, I do. I will tell you this flat out. And marijuana distribution is not legal. You guys all know, we had a city employee arrested by the DEA, what, three weeks ago? Right. On the job for marijuana distribution. <coughs> distribution of production and distribution of marijuana remains a crime under Title 21 Section 841 of the United States Code. So did the ETZ Commission break the law? Well, that's an interesting question because Title 21, Section 846 is the conspiracy statute in which an agreement, simple agreement, makes you part of the conspiracy. You do not have to commit an overt act. Now, under the conspiracy statute in Title 18, which is the general criminal uh, section of, federal, of the federal code, you have to commit an overt act to further the conspiracy, to be guilty of conspiracy. That is not true in Title 21. Trust me, this is what I did for a living for a very long time. I am concerned, and I've articulated this to a number of individuals, that there's two areas. One, that we put ourselves and those involved at risk for being held culpable. Right now, the policy is that the Department of Justice will not prosecute individuals associated with medical marijuana production, medical marijuana that is authorized by a state. That is, a, that is, however, a funding issue. Congress has declined to fund those operations. Congress has not amended or repealed Title 21. If I could bring it back locally, though, if these commission members were part of a conspiratorial act to break federal law, should they be reappointed or should they be removed from the commission? One of the requirements for guilt is intent. There's what they call general intent and specific intent in the law. I do not believe any of these individuals intended to break the law. But politically speaking, should they be removed? I believe that they have, they, they were not adequately informed. To a certain degree, it's probably my fault. Uh, 
I should probably have been there. I did not attend because at the time I was unclear what the appeal process was. I didn't know if an appeal would come to myself in the role of mayor. What I since